Hey guys, so in this little Blender tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this looping bubble animation with cycles. So let's start by opening up Blender. And this is Blender 2.9, by the way, just to let you know. And I'm going to delete all these default objects. I'm going to add in a meta ball. And if you don't know what meta balls are, they're practically, they're basically just spheres. But it, the cool thing about them is that uh, when two or, two or more of them are close enough together, they do this cool merging welding effect, which is what we want in our animation. So meta ball, one meta ball. We're gonna add in a cube as well, and then we're gonna parent this meta ball to this cube. So with the meta ball, shift click the cube, control P object. Now you can see the meta ball is a child of the cube. So if we select the cube and then go into instancing and then click vertices, that'll make it so that there's one meta ball for each vertex of this cube. And if you select the child meta ball and scale it up and down, it applies it to all all of the meta balls. So I feel like that looks pretty good. So now we want to animate the cube. To do that, uh, we're going to add in a displace modifier, new texture, and we'll do a cloud texture. Uh, any noise texture any noise texture is going to work, but I like clouds, so I'm going to use a cloud texture. I'm going to scale the size up to 2, and in this modifiers tab, we're going to change local coordinates to object. And for this object space, we're going to add in an empty. So empty, put it somewhere there, uh, and select that as our object. So now you can see that if we move this empty, it also moves the vertices of our cube. So just to make it look better, we can also play with uh, the strength and the mid-level of this displacement. So I like I like these I like these settings. Let's say strength at 5 and mid-level at 0 0.75. So now, this is what it looks like. So, because we want to animate this in a loop, oops, because we want to animate this in a loop, um, instead of moving this empty, we can just move this cube. And to do that, we're going to go Select the cube, press N to bring up this transform toolbox. And then on the first frame of your animation, which is one, um, keyframe the rotation of your cube by just pressing I. And you'll know you did it because now this is yellow. So uh, I want the last frame of my animation to be 125 because I, I just think that's a nice number. So I'm going to set the end to 125. And I'm going to go to frame 125, and I'm going to set these to 360, and then press I again. So that's how you make a videos loop. You just make sure that the first frame and the last frame are exactly the same. So now, if we play this, you can see that it animates pretty well, and it loops. Yay. So one thing I want to do before we move on is just change the interpolation of these keyframes. So if you go to dope sheet and select the cube, you'll be able to see the, the keyframes that you just set. So I'm just going to select these, right click and set the interpolation mode to linear. That's just because I think it looks better. Uh, it gives the cube a constant rotational velocity, if that makes sense, instead of a non-constant one. <laughs> anyway, so, oh god. Okay, so, hmm. so before we start shading the bubble, 
I kind of want to start setting up the rest of our scene a bit. So I'm going to add a plane, RX90, GY, and then scale it up. And that'll act as our backdrop. And I'm also going to add in a camera. And move that like that. Yeah, that looks good. So before I start shading this bubble, I kind of want something behind it. So if we make the bubble transparent, you can you can tell that you're seeing through it. So to do that, I'm going to make a plane, RX90, and move it close to our backdrop. There. Yeah. Scale it up. And then in the shading tab, I'm just going to give it a very simple image texture. So this is just a photo of an eye test poster I found online. If you if you Google eye test poster, it'll give you this. Um, it doesn't look that great, so I think I have to fix the UVs. So if I go to the UV editing tab, go to edit mode, and select all by pressing A, it actually lets me play with the UVs so that I can match it perfectly. Right about there. Now, if we go back to shading, it's perfectly mapped. Uh, it is a bit distorted though, so I'm going to scale it on the z-axis. It's a tiny bit. There. Uh, just to make this look better, I'm going to add some loop cuts uh, by pressing Control r and right-click. Same on this side. Maybe add a couple more here. And what I'm going to do is just select these edges. I'm going to move them just a tiny bit forward just to give it that realistic paper look. I'm also gonna select all the side edges oh, that's not what I meant to do select all these vertices on the side and move them just a tiny bit down uh, that's some good looking realistic paper scale it down a bit. All right. All right. Now that we have our poster in the background, uh, I'm just going to add a point light. Put it somewhere up here. Give it 3000 power, I don't know. And that looks pretty okay. So now we're going to start shading our bubble. So we click our bubble, go to the shading tab and click new. We're going to add in a magic texture. Connect this to your principled BSDF. And set the depth to 6. And the distortion somewhere here, around 2.5. And scale it to a good size. I like 2. I'm going to do 2. Then we're going to set metallic all the way up, roughness all the way down which gives us this. Next we're going to add in a refraction BSDF and since we want to mix these two shaders we're going to add in a mix shader. One more thing, uh, as the factor for our mix shader we're going to add in a Fresnel node and just so you can visualize what this is, Fresnel looks like this. And we're using that as our factor to mix these two shaders. So, I think we need to switch these two around. Yeah. So, it's not super clear what's happening. Let me just set this to 1 so it's more obvious what's happening. So, what this Fresnel node is doing is 
making it so that where it's white here, it uses this shader. While where it's darker here in the middle, it uses this shader. So it kind of gives that cool bubble effect. But in between this Fresnel and Mix shader, I just want to add a math note and set this to maximum. Or minimum. I think it's minimum. Yeah. This just makes it so that it's a little bit transparent everywhere. So the minimum value for this refraction shader is 0.5. So you can still kind of see the magic texture in the side, which gives that cool bubbly effect. But it's mostly just this shader. Uh, what we can also do is add, or just, just duplicate this make this maximum and set this to more like 0 0.1 so that you can see just a tiny bit of that magic texture even in the center of the object uh, you can barely notice it but it's there let's let's keep that so uh, one thing that I like doing is instead of using this one refraction BSDF I like making three of them and then setting their color to red, green, and blue. Now, this may look weird, but if you add these three shaders together, with these two add shader nodes and use that instead of the first refraction BSDF it gives us pretty much the same thing but what we can do now is change the IOR of each of these to a slightly different value so I'm gonna do 0 0.05 uh, 1.5 1.06 maybe 1.07 So what that gives us is this cool chromatic aberration effect within the bubble where the RGB channels of the text behind it are separating because they have different indexes of refraction. So if you look closely, there's a little tiny cube inside that bubble. And that's because we forgot to turn off show instancer in the viewport and the render. So just make sure you do that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can play with a bunch of the settings and just play around with everything. Just so you have a feel for what you can do. You can add a nice procedural texture to the background. If you want. That's pretty much it.